Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. I have finally decided to work on something that I have meant to work on for a long time now and that's the Orion 3 space plane from 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is not the final version of it. Um, I've taken some liberties with the design as well and probably will have to take a few more. But the external texture is not final. This is just a temporary texture. Uh, but uh, I've done the model and most importantly I've done the interior uh, as you can see we are configured for 24 passengers now technically it was supposed to be 32 it's not exactly the same interior that they had in the movie obviously uh, but the benefit to this is it is the same interior as I used for the Shinkansen space plane and the shuttle mark 2 well the shuttle mark 2 doesn't have this cabin area it does have the front uh, cockpit area uh, which there we go uh, so it's the same thing which means that I save on the texture size basically so it doesn't have to load an extra texture for uh, this area and the areas back here and I'm going to use the same sort of cabins for station modules as well although of course the there won't be seating like this these seats are separate parts anyway uh, there might be crops for a greenhouse module or something like that but I made these ahead of time with that in mind so that they would fit and also that they would be able to have four abreast seating, which is what we have there. In fact, first class accommodations given the leg room and the arm room. I didn't put armrests in, but there's enough room. So. It's pretty luxurious in there, basically, and it is uh, the system where the Kerbals can float through freely. There's lots and lots of colliders on this. Um, we do have a uh, hatch up there. Uh, technically, the space plane is supposed to have a side door, but that just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so we have a hatch there that they can float through, and then we'll have a docking port. Um, there is a catch that the docking port that I meant to use with this is a little bit large for it. So, but that's inconvenient. Uh, we could surreptitiously, uh, surreptitiously tuck it in, but then the colliders on the vehicle might get in the way. So, you'll have to see. So, that is an issue. Uh, but the more important issues are, yaw. It doesn't have a vertical stabilizer or rudder to speak of. And propulsion. Um, it is a space plane that is launched on the back of a carrier plane that I think has aerospikes and jet engines. So it's a larger carrier plane. It's not quite like the Shinkansen where there are two identical ones. And it's launched on the back of it, so it doesn't have to provide its own entire trip to orbit. It's not an SSTO, thankfully, because an SSTO, especially with the limitations that we have in the body here, would be difficult. Uh, however, it was probably an advanced type of propulsion, but we don't have enough space for too much liquid hydrogen if it's nuclear, and overall it's not that big a space plane. So this is fairly realistically sized. Um, the seats here are basically the seat I'm sitting in, which is better than airliner seating. Uh, so they're sized very well, and it was supposed to be four abreast, and the width of this cabin is actually wider than most airliners but so this is the space shuttle crew module and what you can immediately see here is that the space shuttle is huge <laughs> the space shuttle is obnoxiously big and it gives the idea if we had filled the cabin with crew seating um i mean not the cabin the cargo bay with crew seating um that would have been a lot of uh, a lot of passengers so yeah uh, the, the mass of the Orion 3 is actually heavier than it ought to be right now, probably. We're at 51 tons, whereas the dry mass of the shuttle was 80-ish. And the shuttle is very obviously much bulkier. So we could probably be less mass than we are right now. Though, uh, I've, uh, and of course, we haven't put any fuel in right now. Uh, we've only got a little bit of methane and oxygen for a fuel cell, though I'm not sure we want a fuel cell. We'll think about that. But yeah, size-wise, it's it, it's not that far apart from the Shinkansen. Anyway, you sort of get the picture. They're not very different. Uh, this is the old model of it, but... 
since I always wanted to make the Orion 3, the Shinkansen was sort of a standby for it in the first place. As far as propulsion goes, I'm thinking, now again, we can use advanced stuff, but let's say we weren't going to use advanced stuff. We need something that can, uh, with full fuel, get this uh, decent thrust weight ratio. And I've got this SE2060 methane oxygen engine, and it's only 700 kilonewtons, but we've got slots for two here. The problem is we can't really put anything too big. You might be thinking like, oh, put some shuttle engines, but just to give an idea of how big the shuttle engines are. I mean, well, you saw the space shuttle, so you probably have a fair feeling that this isn't going to work out. But this is... Oh, that's an SSME, so that's not going to fit. By the same token, your normal nuclear engine is not going to work. We would have to have a much smaller, maybe the NASA NTP architecture, maybe if we didn't have the the brace there. If we use the NASA NTP architecture, we could have a nuclear engine or two, but they won't provide enough thrust. So, yeah. So there we have two of these, and if we fill up on methane and oxygen, we end up getting 4,000 meters per second. So the carrier plane would have to get us 3,800 or so, and this only gives us 0.82 thrust weight ratio when we decouple from the carrier plane, so that's a thing to think about. So that's one possibility. I haven't put any RCS on here, and but all right. So that's what I'm thinking, but we'll hold off on that for now. We need to do some flight testing, and we are not going to have all of that uh, methane and oxygen in for flight testing. And the reason we need to do flight testing is because the yaw situation, right? So if we take a look at FAR, we see this number here, yaw right angular acceleration should be positive. It is not. And this one is uh, with respect to the yaw right rate it is not positive it should be so even at you know takeoff speeds let's say we have a problem this is just there's a roll right angular acceleration with respect to yaw right rate um probably a vertical stabilizer would help with that at mach 1 and at mach 2 well we've got some other issues at mach 2 i don't know who designed uh, this is approximately the wing that they had on it but whoever designed this has some answering to do because it looks a lot like an X-15 wing. It's not a full delta wing, right? A full delta wing goes all the way to the back. But this is not a full delta wing. It's more like an X-15 wing. And the X-15 had a horizontal stabilizer. You know, so this probably ought to have a horizontal stabilizer or canards to help. But we can potentially make do without as long as we stay at lower speeds if we had some way to control yaw. So let's try and finagle something so that we can flight test this. And uh, I'll put the engines on. I want to flight test this with jet engines. Okay, so J58. And of course we'll need air intakes. At least these fit but they're definitely not pointing through the center of mass. Um, I feel like I would like them to. Uh, no, maybe not. I mean, it's a jet, it's got wings. It should be all right. Okay, they need area 0.676. This is going to be an interesting experiment here. Obviously a ramp intake or something like that would be better, but um, just for looks, we're going to scale up a radial intake to get enough area and go like that for now. Okay, well, we need a little bit of fuel. So not, not all the kerosene. That would be too much. I don't need four hours to test this. Let's knock off a few digits. Uh, 26 minutes seems fine I think yeah it's probably overestimating that all right so given this configuration now 
this is going to be wacky. Yeah, we because uh, we have more mass in the back now, we have to move the wings back. You can see it's a little bit close there right now. We could have put the kerosene in the wing as well. So this wing placement will solve this bad number. Potentially. There we go. Though it's a little bit narrow, we could probably do better than that. And we need to because the landing gear has to go further back now. As you can see. So, okay, that's fine. But now we've got all the yaw related stuff. And what are we going to do about that? Well, we're going to add a, a surface that was not originally on. We could put wingtip ones, and maybe that would be fine. But I'll try and we'll try we'll try and V-tail it. Let's see. That's better. It's not perfect yet, though. That's good on that one number. That's not quite as good on the other one. But maybe we need the rudder. Um, the fact that they are sort of tilted like this probably isn't the best thing. Well, that didn't change much, so that's fine. B9 procedural wings sure is handy for this sort of thing. Technically, I want the paint job a little bit different on the wings, but we won't deal with that. Also, obviously you would expect some tiling on the bottom of the Orion 3. Um, so black tiles, but they didn't have that in the fictional version. So we'll leave that off for the time being until I do the final paint job. Okay, that's plausible. Ooh, now we need to... There's more mass in the back now, so we need to move the wing again. That's fine. This number is still an issue, though. It's a roll coupling thing. If we move this forward, it seems to help. Yep. Okay, so... At relatively low Mach number, at 112 meters per second basically, we have the ability to have positive lift at 17 degrees angle of attack, which is a lot. I don't seem like we're going to be able to do it, but we'll see. Uh, I, I think I will change to the shuttle runway to give ourselves some room. Um, let's do that. But at least we don't have an obnoxiously huge vertical stabilizer situation here. Okay, out here this is what it looks like. I'll apply the brakes for now. It's not flopping on its tail, so the back landing gear is okay. Bottle up. Uh, I have atmospheric autopilot. We'll try that out. And ignition. Let's see if we get thrust out of these with these intakes. We do. Alright. Releasing brakes. Here goes nothing. Uh, we're going off to one side. The body does get a little bit of lift. So we do have body lift. We'll see if that works out for us. We're a little bit squirrely right now on the runway. Um, try and rotate. Okay, we have rotation. We don't have a whole lot of rear clearance. The little spike on the tail doesn't have a... Oh! We're off! Yeah, it doesn't have a collider on that little spike in the tail, but otherwise there's a lot of colliders. We are off the ground. I am actually surprised. <laughs> uh, we are using a lot of pitch authority to be off the ground though, and I get the strange feeling that this is not going to land very well. This is sort of crazy. <laughs> it's such a beautiful thing. I mean, of course, uh, if I get the 
the wings looking right and the textures right, it'd look even better. Alas, we might have to have vertical stabilizers, even though it's not originally supposed to. It's not handling badly. Well, certainly not at this speed. At uh, the lower speeds, I'd be a bit more worried because of the use of pitch authority, but right now it's okay. Oh, and if you don't think that I already have in mind trying to make the Mass Effect Normandy <laughs> with the pass-through system and Kerbal's floating about, uh, obviously, but that, that'll take much more doing. It's three decks, at least three decks, right? That's a whole, whole other business. We're basically uh, transonic right now. The airliner speeds, well, past airliner speeds, really pushing it. Um, Far says we are uh, Mach 0.928, and we're experiencing high dynamic pressure, of course, because it's not good to be Mach 0.93 now at this altitude and be an airliner-ish kind of thing. We're currently heavier than a 737 or something like that, even though we only have 24 passengers. Oh hey, uh, in this install I have the monument launcher platform and those tanks. You can see the row of four tanks there. You know, that's the monument launcher pier. Did not have that in 1.11 yet because Kerbal Constructs, I haven't figured out how to get Kerbal Constructs to work in 1.11. Mercifully, unlike stock aircraft, it uh, doesn't experience crazy drag. That was my problem making stock airplanes. I mean, I'm used to this, obviously, with FAR and everything. Planes are slick. They don't... They need air brakes, right? They they don't get ridiculous amounts of drag if they're basically pointed prograde. Okay, maybe that'll be enough room. The one downside to the pass-through system, you know, the open cockpits where Kerbals can flow about, is of course I can't do IVA view with them. So, especially with a plane, that's a little bit sad. Okay, but I can go into lock view and that'll be necessary here to make a landing. We are a little bit heavy because we still have most of our fuel load. And I probably should have put air brakes on here. Might try and kill some speed, but not too much. Well, we're coming in rather fast still. But uh, we're maxing out our pitch authority too, so I think we're going to have to just come in fast. <laughs> I guess that's what it would have to do. We'll see. We can hover above the runway for some time. I think we should probably go down. Not too bad, not too bad actually. If it was empty of fuel, it would probably be close to the shuttle's landing speeds. I don't want to skid. We had a little hop there. Uh, we're gonna run out of runway. Oh, there's a little bit of area there. I'm not supposed to use that, but I'll take it. Are you gonna be okay? Okay, not a splashdown. All right, all right. So. Well, there you have it. Uh, first draft of the Orion 3 space plane has made a test flight. We will see what I manage to do with it in future videos. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.